Hello guys, my name is Mike, welcome back to the YouTube channel, and today we're having a first on this channel by checking out Alternate History Hub in their video, What If Germany Invaded Britain? Hope you guys enjoy. So what if Germany had invaded Britain? Now this is Alternate History Hub, as we said in the intro, this is the first video I'm checking out about them, and I assume, given the title of the, the channel, it's all about exploring alternate history. Now, as I said in the Germany Could Not Win World War II video, Alternate history is a dangerous but extremely fun thing to do. Obviously you can't speculate or you can't take too much into alternate history because it is alternate history. It's not our timeline and anything that we can really gather from it is merely just speculation and kind of fan fiction and just basically our best guesses. So there's no way of knowing what would have happened. Um, I've speculated though in that video and as I'm going to put my point here is what if Germany had invaded Britain? I presume this is in the Second World War. Um, and had Operation Sea Lion succeeded. But before I go into detail on that, I want to see what all in the History Hub have to say about it. And as always, the link will be in the description, and I'll kind of jump in where I can. So let's get into it. In 1940, after France fell, it seemed like a real possibility as the bombs rained down on Britain that the UK was going to face the German army rolling onto their shores and conquering the island. A full-scale invasion of Britain. Now, Wargaming came to me in this sponsor, saying how in the new World of Tanks War Stories Operation Sea Lion, that invasion became a reality. The Nazis in World War II don't just stay on the mainland, but invade the United Kingdom. Well, we all know that didn't happen. The UK persevered, very much to Hitler's dismay, and a few years later, it was the British instead sailing the Channel and taking out the Nazis. What would have been the plan to invade the UK was called Operation Sea Lion. It's such a popular concept in alternate history, it surprises me why I didn't cover it sooner. So let's imagine what if in an alternate timeline, the Nazis had followed through with Operation Sea Lion. They invade Britain. And this is the thing though with alternate history, is you kind of need to bend reality away from what it was. Um, I am a strong advocate that um, if you're dealing with alternate history, the time in which Britain would, if Britain ever was to have pulled out of the Second World War and made some sort of peace or whatever, then it would have been after Dunkirk. Let's say in alternate history, Dunkirk fails and the Germans roll through and, you know, the BEF are either completely captured or killed along with the French that they evacuated. That is the only time that I can feel like in our history that Britain might be compelled to come to the peace team peace table and even then it's an extremely long stretch the reason why sea lion didn't work and why i struggle with believing that it ever would work unless you completely change the fabric of history is of a little thing called the royal navy um and as we know the the germans did not have much of a sea fleet or a a, a surface fleet rather that i can that can contest with the Royal Navy. Uh, even the capital ships that they did have, like the Bismarck, like the Graf Spee, um, those types of things, they were given orders to try and avoid contact with the Royal Navy if they could help it. They were only really told to engage merchant shipping with their capital ships. The U-boats, uh, obviously, after the sinking of Bismarck, then took on that role. But generally speaking, the Kriegsmarine tried to avoid conflict with the Royal Navy. And the reason why it wouldn't work, um, or why it didn't work necessarily, is because you just need to think of D-Day. It took the combined might of the two most powerful navies in the world, of the United States and Britain, to make D-Day possible. Germany had a fraction of that type of ships. Even if you give them the benefit of the Italian fleet, that still isn't nowhere near the logistic capability of both the United States and the United Kingdom. Additionally, Germany did not have landing craft and, of course, you know, you're kind of forgetting about the Royal Navy existence in the first place, that once the German Navy is in the Channel, that the Royal Navy wouldn't just sweep around and, well, sink them. Um, but that's why Sea Lion didn't work, and that's why I struggle with alternate history with Sea Lion actually succeeding, because it's so far away from our timeline. But we'll see uh, what this alternate history is, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to learn more. First thing I want to answer is, what would be the objective of the invasion itself? This seems pretty weird to say, considering we're talking about Nazi Germany. Invasion for the sake of invasion would be a simple enough reason. Hitler adding to territory for the Reich, like a risk game. But in Britain's case, this was never the situation. 
Invading Britain was the absolute last thing the Nazis wanted to do. Hitler wanted the British to simply surrender once France fell so he could focus on the main event, the invasion of Russia. If the British morale was so low, then maybe they'd ask for peace, hence the bombings. But then Winston Churchill defiantly showed this was not the case, and Germany realized the UK wasn't going to simply let this go. Operation Sea Lion wasn't an invasion of conquest, but of desperation, if anything. Nobody in the German high command, even Hitler himself, had confidence in the plan. But why? Britannia, and the ruling the seas part. Even though Germany had the Blitzkrieg on their side, they never came close to the naval capabilities of the British. That channel absolutely terrified the Germans. The idea of having to cross it and land troops on the island was just an absolute logistical nightmare. Most people, especially in the Navy, doubted the Reich even had the ships to pull it off. Even for the Navy powers of Britain and America, D-Day was a practical miracle that the amphibious landing was even achieved and that included four years of naval combat experience and added superiority on the seas. The Germans didn't have the naval experience or the navy numbers to even put a dent in His Majesty's Navy. And they knew if they attempted to invade, their forces would be decimated by the British before even reaching the shore. So although nobody was confident in the plan, Hitler laid out four requirements they'd need to meet before moving on to such an invasion. I'll include those in the scenario. In this alternate timeline, let's go easy on the Germans and say all the requirements Hitler had are met for them to go forward with the invasion. The Germans win the Battle of Britain. The Royal Air Force is decimated. Sometime in September, the Royal Navy is distracted off the coast of Norway and Italy, giving them enough time to clear the few British ships or mines from the channel. Any that enter are simply destroyed by German artillery. The next phase goes to the Kriegsmarine, the German Navy. Now the Kriegsmarine are down on their luck. They barely had the capabilities to really do much at all. And because they were so small, if Germany lost a ship, it hurt them far more than if the British lost theirs. The Navy would need to ship troops across the channel. This brings on images of the Allies on D-Day with these landers. But for the Germans, they only had two prototypes for a similar ship in 1940. So if you were a German soldier in the invasion, you'd be placed in a modified riverboat. If you were lucky, yours would actually control itself. But most had to be towed by tugboats. You'd be a part of a 67,000 men invasion force shipping from northern France to southern England in the cover of night. The objective is to secure the beachhead, set up artillery along the English coast, and use it to sink any ships entering the channel. Then when all that was achieved, the Germans would encircle London, trap it, and then force a surrender. The farthest north that Germany would go is just a little bit south of Cambridge, because once again, the Germans hoped that the British would just surrender. The idea that the Royal Navy's ships, particularly the home fleet, is not at home. Um, it's it's out. It's it's gone to the shops to buy milk and cigarettes or something, and allows the Germans to cross. And again, you're talking about the the Kriegsmarine being able to do this, which, uh, as I said before this video as well, it was a logistical nightmare for the UK and the US, let alone the Kriegsmarine, um, who by this time, well, depending on when they were or when they planned to launch this in this alternate invasion, could either be looking in even worse shape than they were at the start. Um, so that's already a, a problematic point. And as they said, crossing the channel in riverboats, I don't imagine that could be very nice to do. Um, yeah, and what he said is true. The, the Germans did not have any sort of uh, real templates or real manufactured uh, landing crafts it is essentially it would be riverboats it would be tugboats and neither of which I would imagine make quite good landing craft uh, particularly in the ways that you think of uh, of D-Day landing on uh, landing with those craft but also the invasion as they said planned just above London uh, just just south of Cambridge and the reality is that there was um, contingency plans made for the royal family and stuff like that in the government. And the, the reality is they would just relocate to the Midlands um, 
you know, just for for those of you who aren't familiar with the UK geogra- geography, they'd move from London and they'd move maybe a hand, well, maybe a couple tens of miles uh, north of where London kind of was, and that's where they just settle down and carry on with things. Um, so even then, as they said, it is an act of desperation. The idea that the Germans thought that they could take London and then that would kind of knock us out of the war, similar to, I suppose, what they'd done with Paris. Well, of course, we never actually knew what would happen in that circumstance. Would British public morale collapse if London fell? We don't know. What we do know is that there were plans to just simply have fallback lines. So maybe the government might well have continued fighting similar to uh, the Soviet Union. Obviously not as hard fought to for now as the Soviets did with every man, woman and child getting involved. But I would strongly... Yeah, I, I don't strongly believe that just because London fell necessarily would uh, would Britain pull out of the war. And particularly that's also assuming that they could take London because London, remember, is a huge city. It's got a huge population. Um, and that would, you can bet your money that uh, London would have been defended at all costs from, you know, n- not just the military. I imagine a, a fair amount of civilians who were able would have been putting up... Um, a strong fight in that as well. So let, let's see where this goes. And as is tradition, what if they didn't, you ask? Well, what it seems like would have happened is the Germans would have just been stuck on an island, isolated from mainland Europe, where any help or supplies is just sunk by a nation with a far superior navy and air force. So, you say, that really seems like Nazi Germany is in a bit of a huge mess. In fact, Instead of Operation Sea Lion being the final death of the Allies like it often is perceived as in the media, it seems more like it would have been a bungled mess due to the limitations of the German Navy and the superiority of Britons. And for the first time, Jimmy, you would be right. In an alternate timeline where Nazi Germany invaded Britain, even if they did encircle London, I believe the British simply would have moved up the border and used their naval and air superiority to destroy the German supply lines, essentially just stranding 60,000 Germans on an island with no escape. A reverse Dunkirk. That's not even including the Americans who eventually would have been involved in the war anyway. The reason why Operation Sea Lion was scrapped was because even Hitler, the same guy that thought invading Russia was a good idea, had the foresight to see how much Germany would lose to Britain. If the Germans went through with it, it probably would have been a drawn-out failure. Southern England still would have seen a catastrophic loss of life, far more than in our timeline. With supply lines cut, it's likely the Germans resort to looting and pillaging. But eventually they'd surrender. And this surrender would prove Churchill's words that Britain would continue to fight, and prove Germany wasn't as invincible as everybody thought. This might even potentially push back German plans to invade the Soviet Union, force them to reevaluate. But that's more speculative, though. What do you think would have happened? So, even though in my scenario I predicted Germany would lose, it doesn't mean there wouldn't be a battle or two. And as a massive fan of World of Tanks, I'm glad they introduced War Stories. This video was inspired by War Stories Operation Sea Lion, an alternate history campaign where this plan became a reality and the Germans invaded. With tanks, of course. In honor of it coming out, Wargaming has a special offer for players that sign up using the link down below. By clicking the link, you get one free tank, a garage slot, and three days of premium game time while this offer lasts. World of Tanks is an online multiplayer game where you command a single tank against 30 other players, also in tanks. There are over 450 historically accurate World War II tanks from two decades you can pick. It regularly updates and continuously has new stuff, and it's free to play on all PS4 and Xbox One consoles. Like this video and subscribe to support the channel if you have not done so. This is Cody of Altering History Hub. So you heard the man as well. If you enjoyed that video then please, link will be in the description below. Go over, check them out, subscribe to Altering History Hub. Because this, this Altering History is fun to talk about, it's fun to speculate. Because the answer is, there is no set kind of right or wrong, fact, non-fact type of thing, because it all comes down to opinions and what we think would happen. As I said, I'm inclined to agree with, I think his name was Cody here, is that um, had everything gone the Germans' way, so had they had 
aerial superiority had the home fleet been occupied and the germans were able to land troops and form a beachhead and then kind of let's say they can even take london the reality is i still think much like as cody suggested the royal navy has to come back surely i would imagine like say the royal navy is engaged in action in the mediterranean or engaged in the north sea or elsewhere even in the pacific the moment that britain was invaded every ship has got to be recalled for that i would imagine and even then you'd just have the same thing where what little creeks marine there is uh, keeping that channel open with those supplies and those logistics flowing the royal navy would eventually come back clear the channel and suddenly as he said you have that initial invasion force that are just kind of stuck there and the reason why i let the the sponsorship kind of play through as well is because you know obviously it's a game and it's fictional and stuff like that and it's fun but also another thing that you need to think about as well is if the germans didn't actually have a uh, landing craft that means that in order to get heavier munitions like uh, as they said the plan was to get artillery there and um to kind of shell shipping how are you going to get that artillery heavy enough to do damage to ships across the channel um when you only have like river boats and tugboats surely he, um i would imagine you need heavier vessels in order to unload that which means you need to take some of the ports and that becomes even more uh, logistical problems from that as as we saw in our own timeline when the allies were pushing in from d-day and there was kind of the race to try and secure the the ports in the low countries in order to keep the flow of logistics coming through and as i said this is with the uk the us and the commonwealth combined they're having these issues this is germany practically alone trying to do this exact same thing um and the same thing goes for tanks as well um you need to get those tanks somewhere where they can get unloaded get offloaded and stuff like that you know tanks were landed at the beaches of uh normandy but a lot of them uh, ended up going to the bottom of the sea because again the logistics the organization the the kind of the running off things didn't work how it was supposed to and so the idea that the kriegsmarine are supposed to essentially do a reverse d-day with way less not even half like sufficiently less uh logistical and naval support i i think is just is just doomed to failure um and eventually as they said any german troops who would have landed would just simply have been cut off and either captured or killed and and that's that's kind of the reality of it in my opinion um i don't think it would have knocked britain out of the war either as i said i think the closest that you could come in an alternate history to britain not being in the war or getting knocked out of the war is the utter destruction of the bef at dunkirk and then there's an argument to be made that perhaps churchill instead of churchill it's halifax and he might try and have a peace deal who because he was more kind of appeasement uh orientated oriented rather but even then i think that's that's just pure kind of historical fiction um but you know what do you guys think that that's the beauty of alternate history if there are more videos from this channel as well that you would like me to pick up this just popped up in my recommendations i thought oh, i might i might as well check it out so uh without further ado guys what do you think would happen do you have any other recommendations from alternate history or other recommendations from other things uh overall uh, if do please put them in the comments below along with any feedback and uh without further ado i thank you ever so much for watching i hope you enjoy and i hope to see you next time thank you stay safe Bye bye